Hello, in this video I'll demonstrate how to blend natural, generated, and custom terrains together in GIMP and TerraSculptor. For one part of the terrain I'll use an altitude map I found of Mars. The terrain we want to create is 4096 by 4096. We'll end up downscaling this later to 1024 by 1024. After importing it into TerraSculptor, in the Scene Objects menu on the right, I've turned off Home Grid. In the Properties menu, changing the Y scale will change the apparent vertical height of the uh, map, but it won't actually change the height map. This height map looks very flat, so I'll normalize the data and see what I get. I'll generate two additional terrains to blend in the top of the map. I'll choose something for the top left of the map now. I'm being careful not to clip the altitude of the map that's shown by the gray slider between the map and the generator settings. It'll turn red if uh, you begin to exit the available height map range values. Customize the terrain a bit with the Modify and Transform tools, and finally save an altitude map. With altitude weight map parameters all set to 100, I'll export one height map of the entire map. I'd like to use this feature in the bottom right of the map, so I'll set the low and fall off parameters to isolate it and save that height map. Now I'll generate a feature for the top right of the map. I like this set of mountains in the bottom right, but we'll need to reposition both terrains that we've generated to fit onto Mars. I'll use the transform and modify tools to isolate the mountain range in one corner of the map, still taking care not to exceed uh, the maximum value of the height map. The low parameter is pretty close to what I used for the other terrain. Save a height map mask of the isolated feature and the entire terrain with parameters set to 100. Now in GIMP we'll open one set of height masks. Link the two layers together to shift the geography to the top left of the map.
and crop to selection. I'll use the airbrush tool to isolate the feature completely in the mask. Set the mass mode to darken only. Add a layer and set its opacity to 100. The background color should be black in this example. Right click on any layer and select new from visible. In the colors menu, select auto stretch contrast to normalize the mask. Save the visible layer. I'll rotate and clean up the second mask now. I'll be eroding the map in TerraSculptor so this doesn't have to be perfect. I'll set the mask to darken only in its mode. Normalize the map and save the height mask. Use the blend tool in the transform menu to load an external file using the mask as both the blend source and the alpha blend file. Be sure to check use alpha blend file. Set the blend amount to 100. Changing the color levels of the mask in GIMP will allow you to blend in at different altitudes. Here we see it's blending in at a lower altitude, but uh, we see that the altitude changes are still blending well at the border. Now we'll create a mask to add a river that flows to the crater in the center. In GIMP I've used the path tool to make a spline leading to the crater in the center of the map. We'll add an all white layer and use the stroke path with the airbrush tool to add it a few times. I invert the layer, set its mode to multiply, and make a new layer from visible. I invert the layer back to white before saving it. In TerraSculptor, using a constant value of zero as the blend source and the river mask for the alpha blend file will let you carve the river into the terrain. Now is a good time to save the map before we begin the erosion process. I'll use three of the erosion tools saving the smooth masks. I'll use slope erosion followed by hydraulic and then rain. One key setting in the rain erosion is setting the rain amount to auto.
Here are the erosion mats that were created. And I'll make sure the map is normalized before exporting it. Now I'll change the units for the project to use the settings I found appropriate for your lumber yard. I'll choose a color set to use for the mega texture initially. The color set bitmap and vertex color bitmap are similar. The color set bitmap is applied to the height map only, but the vertex color bitmap applies to the mesh as it is displayed in TerraSculptor uh, using the properties scales. So we'll be using the vertex color bitmap and applying scale to achieve the look that we want. Now's a good time to save the map and project in its final eroded state. We created a four kilometer terrain in order to get a four kilometer mega texture. The next step will be to downsample the terrain to 1K to use Use the vertex color set bit. Either undo all of the changes to the pre eroded state or load the pre eroded map. The down sample tool is the best option for scaling the terrain down to 1k. Repeat the erosion processes. All settings should be set what they were before. This time, don't save the masks, but do uh, increase smoothing to 100 on every erosion. and a dash of noise. We'll use the binary terrain format to export to Lumberyard. Export settings will be set to normalize, but I'll normalize again once more to be sure. Set the data type to 32-bit single signed. In Lumberyard, we'll make a new level and create a new terrain, checking its uh, basic settings.
After importing the terrain, I want to see how it looks before I refine the terrain textures. Refine the terrain texture tiles in the game terrain menu. After re-importing the mega texture, I generate terrain texture in the game terrain menu. In the next video, I'll go over blending and other post-processing for the mega textures that we generate in TerraSculptor. Thanks for watching.